Tiger Lily Squad. What's poppin'? What's poppin'? What's poppin'? What's poppin'? What's poppin'? What's poppin'? What's Hey, hey. What's poppin'? What's poppin'? What's? Hey, hey. Welcome back to my channel. Happy Sunday. Yo, y'all. Before we get into this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. But I'm so sorry. I've missed like two Sundays. Well, one, um... Dallas decided that, well, not even Dallas, Texas decided that it wanted to have some sort of um, winter apocalypse going on outside. So it didn't shut down the whole city, didn't have power uh, for like four or five days. Water was out for like two days. It was just a lot. But we are back <clears throat> and we are doing just living but we're gonna do it a little different this year because we're gonna do videos on Sunday and then um, the vocal parts, if you don't follow me on YouTube, will be on the Anchor app for your enjoyment. But um, let's press record. <laughs> All right, so in this episode of Just Living, we will be discussing um, God's voice, or is it my voice, and expectations. So this is something that I've been thinking about for the entire week, two weeks, and it's just been on my mind heavy because my spirituality is getting a little bit stronger because, backstory, a lot of things have been going on in reference to me and God's relationship. And listen, I just be like, yo, I don't know what I did to him. He just not feeling the sis. Like a lot of things have been going on. I don't understand why he is allowing this to happen. And I just was just into like, you know what, the the tarot cards and the the law of attraction, which I'm still involved in. Um but my relationship with God was just like, yeah. So um, I started last year, um, started to like read the Bible app slowly. Um, every morning I would just open it up and read um, like the devotion for the day and whatnot. And then I just started to um, trust God a little bit more, mainly because I saw him doing stuff in my life, but um, it was something that just felt right. You know what I mean? It just felt like this is what I'm supposed to do. Um, just, God, listen, I'm about to just give you all of, like, you take all of this, you handle it, and let me know what to do, right? So, what got me confused is that people always be like, when you want to make a decision, think about God and what he would do and talk to him and then he'll answer you back. And oftentimes, and this is even now, I always wonder, is it God's voice that I'm hearing or is it me because this is what I want or don't want? So is it God telling me to do it or is it me telling me not to do it? So I have some notes. And um, according to Google, the Abrahamic religion, the voice of God is a communication from God to human beings. So the voice is from you, from God's mouth to you, because we're human beings. A little deeper, I did some research, because like I said, I've been thinking about this for a hot little minute. And it says, stepping out and acting on what you think god's voice is and taking those steps in into faith um so perfect example i was thinking about picking up a part-time job um because as you guys know or don't know i'm a full-time entrepreneur but i wanted to get some more residual income basically more for saving purposes right so um and then, you know, in entrepreneurship, you go through your struggles and your ups and downs. And I was going through a down moment where I like, yo, 
like my bills are being paid thank you god but it's just like it's like it's hand and like hand to mouth like every time i get something i gotta put it into bills so should let me apply for this and without speaking to him i just applied to the jobs um i got something but as i got it i'm thinking like should i do this like is it the right decision to make? So I sat down and spoke to God and I'm just like, uh, my mans, <laughs> like you, I told you I would trust you and I don't think this is trusting you by getting that, by applying to jobs. Is it trusting you? I, I have no idea. Did you put that thought into my head? Um, so I had like some thoughts after asking this question. I had some thoughts like, no, this probably is not the right thing to do. It's just not sitting well. And then I was like, is it me thinking that because I really do not want to have a part-time job? Like I want to push through and continue pushing what I'm doing because I know it's going to pay off. Or is it um, God saying like, no, trust me, I got you. Don't even worry about it. Like don't do that like i understand why you would want to do it but i'm telling you i got you and this is why it doesn't feel well in your spirit do you understand and um so i have another thing that says how does god speak to us how god speaks to us is just in in, in just about any way like how does god speak to me and i was thinking about that like if i ask him a question how is he talking to me like through someone else I feel like sometimes I get like signs on the TV like I'm minding my business I had literally just asked him a question and I'm watching Grey's Anatomy like the fifth season sis and <laughs> this already happened and something that uh, Meredith or Miranda said triggered the question that I just asked him and that was my response so it's almost like yo the universe they got you like your spirit guys are just like, yo, you know what I'm saying? So I often go back and forth like, yo, is this my voice or is this actually God? Um, doing uh, more research, it says, ask you, it says to ask you these questions, right? Why do you want to hear from God? Like, what's the reason behind it? And oftentimes, um, you need an answer to go down the right path. But majority of the time, you just need God to co-sign your nonsense. Keep it a buck. Like you already know the answer. You know what to do. But you want him to co-sign your nonsense. I will cuss, but I ain't about to do that. So you just want a yes man. And, and from what I've learned and the research that I have dove into, he not about to be your yes man. He about to tell you what to do. If you don't do it, he gonna be like, listen, I told you what to do. You go ahead and learn. I got your back when it don't work out, but go ahead, All right? So in that being said is that when we ask for stuff and you finally understand, and I'm still learning, I don't know, but when you finally understand his voice, then the humbleness kicks in because this is like law of attraction too. Like you ask, believe, you receive, right? You ask the question, okay, you believe, you believe in God, the universe, whoever you believe in, you believe that this is going to happen. And now you're waiting for the receive part. And that's in the, the ask, believe, re believe and receive part is where we get a little impatient because we want things to happen literally right away. And it just doesn't work like that. Like imagine you are not, well, it's not imagine you are not the only person who live here, right? Like there's a billion people, a trillion people who live on earth. You are not the only one who put it in your request. Right. And although the universe can answer your request right away, if they choose, maybe you're just not ready for it. And maybe it's just not the time. 
So in the midst of talking to God and understanding his voice, I would say also be humble and patient. And this is something I myself am working on. Not only figuring out is that his voice, and now it becomes a gut thing. Like I said, with the part-time job, it's now a gut thing. In my gut, I just feel like, like this will bring in some money, some good money, but gut-wise, and I feel like that gut is God. Does that make sense? I feel like that gut is his voice. Not all the time, and once again, research, not all the time, it's a vocal thing. It can be an emotion as well, you know? So that is the portion of God's voice. If you guys have any comments on that, leave it in the comment box below or send me an email or whatever. So like if you could get more in depth with me about God's voice, because I'm still learning. I'm still learning. So let's get into expectations. Now, <laughs> the reason why I even want to talk about expectations is because not one, not two, but three people have told me that my expectations for people are too high. And this is romantic, friendship, family. Um, and I, I asked the question, how does my expectation, what, what makes my expectations high? Like, what do you feel? And... I'm not getting a clear response. So I know what expectations are and I know how they can be detrimental or good in any form of relationship, even job. But we are gonna do some research, right? So expectations, a strong belief that something will happen or be the case in the future. So when I read that, I'm just like, strong belief that something will happen or be the case in the future. So I'm believing that something will happen. I'm believing that somebody is going to be this way. Um, I'm believing that they will do that. And when I do this, my expectations get damaged. And I, then I turn around and get hurt because... I expected certain things from certain people and I just didn't get it. So the top of the list for me now is just managing my expectations. So I wrote down things that I want to implement and I figured that it will help you too. So one is just like ask yourself what you're expecting from a situation like friendships relationships, a job, what do you expect from this? What are you expecting to come out of this? What are you expect? How are your expect expectations towards said person? What like first you got to ask yourself these questions, right? And then look for the positives in what you already have. So I might let's let's dig in relationships. I might be talking to somebody right now. And I'm expecting, because we seem to be interested in each other, I'm expecting to hear from you on a regular basis. Like, I'm expecting that three to four days don't go by and I haven't heard from, like, I'm not expecting that. You know what I mean? So, if it doesn't happen, let's put a positive spin on it. Well... When he does reach out to me, um, he asks me how I'm doing. He compliments, um, he compliments me. Uh, he educates me about certain. Th let's let's think of some positives instead of thinking. And that's I guess where the communication. But we'll talk about that another time. But the expectation um, overshadows sometimes the goodness that is coming out of the situation. Does that make sense? So then number three is remind yourself that social media posts aren't always realistic. When I tell y'all, I wrote these things down in reference to myself because oftentimes, and I wrote this down mainly because I have a hard time 
looking at something on social media and sometimes um, not realizing that, okay, what they posted about them in Cancun and having a time of their life, yeah, that's cool. But it's not showing like the behind the scenes, like what happened before that picture was taken, what happened after, what happened leading to, like I don't want to think negatively, like oh my god, all this should have. But but if if I if I haven't heard from you, like let's talk about friends. If I haven't heard from you, and I think something's wrong, and then I go on social media and I see that you are good, like you are living the best life and everything, but I haven't heard from you. Um, expectations kick th kick in or even assumptions like okay so you just didn't want to talk to me so how is it okay for you to hang out and do all this stuff for everybody else but you see where expectations start a rabbit hole into going into other things that had nothing to do with nothing because I assume that the person is good because of what I'm seeing on social media but lo and behold when I actually reach out to them they tell me, listen, yeah, I'm going through some stuff and that was the first time or in a long time that I felt comfortable enough to even come outside. But because your expectations were disappointed, then it became it become it turns into assuming now we have this issue. So number four, don't beat yourself up for feeling disappointed. If something doesn't, if the expectations that you have doesn't pan out and you get disappointed because of it, you are human. You are allowed to be disappointed. Don't let nobody make you feel bad about it. But in the same breath, don't beat yourself up about it. Oftentimes, we're easily to forgive other people than ourselves, right? If something doesn't pan out, like say a job or something like that, you you expect to get all this credit, you expect to get this raise and that time of the year comes and it doesn't happen and you sit down and you're beating yourself up like, what did I do? How, how could I improve this? Like, you know what I'm saying? Don't beat yourself up about it. Assess the situation, see what you can get out of it and move on. Okay, so I have this quote. Sometimes we expect more from others because we would be willing to do that much for them. That is me. <laughs> so I would say that in relationships, and this is friendships, family, I just say relationships, I tend to give a lot. Like, and it's almost like I do the giving not expecting anything in return, but low-key expecting you to, I guess, if if push come to shove, you would do the same thing for me. You know what I'm saying? Like, in the moment, you're not like, oh, I'm doing this for them, and they better do this for me. No, you're not thinking like that. Well, at least I'm not. But then, if something were to happen to you, and you reach out to these people, and they don't do even close to what you did for them when they were going through stuff you feel in your heart like yo like dang like i had your back you can't have mine so that's where this quote it really hits home for me let me say it again sometimes we expect more from others because we would be willing to do that much for them and we gotta stop doing that Mainly, we got to stop doing things for people, expecting things in return. One, that's wrong. You should just do stuff just to do it. And two, the way how you treat people, don't think that they're going to treat you the same way. And that doesn't mean they think less of you. People just do things differently. It is a learning process for me. Like, so don't feel bad if this is something that you just are not getting right away because it took me and I'm still learning what I do for others and how I act to others does not necessarily mean that they're gonna do it to me. And that does not mean that is a negative thing because they don't do what I do for them. By creating these uh, expectations for people and not having conversations about it, it can turn into, or it can seem like it's a toxic trait. Um, 
because it can just seem negative because when you're expecting stuff and you're not receiving it, it turns into assumptions and then you have these unrealistic type conversations with people and they have no idea what you're even talking about because they didn't know you were expecting this stuff from them. You never had this conversation. So it, it comes into nagging, complaining, assuming, and those are all toxic traits. And a lot of times we don't think that we're being toxic, but sometimes the toxicity is you and it's because of your expectations, right? Um, another thing with expectations is that you think that you're right and the person is wrong. Let me just <laughs> sip my smoothie real quick. You think that you're right and the other people is wrong. So let's go back to, okay, if I do something for you, you better do that for me. That's wrong. But in your head, you think that's right. Because I did that for them, they should do it for me. Nah, sis, that's wrong. And then you go around with a little attitude because you're expecting them to do that for you too because you did that for them. And it's like, nah. <laughs> when did we have this conversation? It'd be nice. Oh, trust and believe it'd be nice. But that's your expectations that you you um put it out on somebody else. That ain't their fault, right? And then it turns into you turn into a victim. The victim role comes in. Oh well, I did this for you, and when you were struggling, I had your back. And when and when it comes to me now, now you don't know me. No, no, no. Like that ain't fit. Like it turns into like a victim role, right? So once we accept reality of the situation, we put ourselves into a stronger position to do something constructive and influence the situation for the better. Let's say that again. Once we accept reality of the situation, we put ourselves in a stronger position to do something constructive and influence the situation for the better. Um, People have multiple reasons why they act the way that they do. What you see is not always reality. You can't see things on surface. So because someone decided that they're, in, they're not going to talk to me for a couple days and um, they're going to post on social media, because I talked about that earlier, does not mean that is a personal attack against me. And just because I see them on social media having the time of their life does not mean what I like that they're not going through stuff. Maybe that they just don't feel like expressing like the bad side or the not so good side on social media. What I see is not always the reality. And I could say that for myself. I come up on YouTube and I come up on Instagram and I do all this thing and I make sure that y'all good and y'all in good spirits. But sometimes when I turn that camera off, I'll sit on my bed and I'll start to cry because I'm just going through something or something like triggered me. And y'all would not even know. You know what I mean? So take that into consideration before you, you, you go feeling some sort of way about anything. And... The next thing to like, so these are like ways to help with curbing your expectations, right? Number two is to ask the right questions at the right time. Example, I know you're frustrated, annoyed, or feel victimized in the moment, but think one through 10 right now, how important is this? How important will it be in a couple years? Like the thing that you have anxiety about and stressing about in the moment, is it really that serious? Because you're expected to hear from this person every single day and you don't, but you still hear from them a decent amount of time. Is it that serious to bring it up in a conversation? Is it that serious to like get yourself all worked up two years from now? Is it really gonna affect you? If it is, then yes, have the conversation. But if it's not, if, it's, if you really take a step back and simmer down your emotions, is it that serious? If it's not, leave it be. But if it is, 
definitely have the conversation. Definitely, 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 definitely. Okay, the third one is, what assumptions can I be making right now? So for me, my expectation is that if I um, am talking to someone, uh, I feel like I should at least hear from you every day. Um, this is an example. I feel like I should hear from you every day. We don't have to be on the phone all day every day, but I should get an okay, how you doing, um, something. If I don't get that every day, the assumption is made that the person don't is not feeling me like that or they just don't want to talk to me. The reality of the situation, if you take the emotions out of it, is that they might be hecka busy. They might be tired. They might be talking to other people and just can't talk to you as much. It's almost like you just need to take a step back. Sometimes the emotion, I tell you, the emotion makes things worse than what they really are like for real and got your head like for me it just be having my head just run like all kind of scenarios be popping in this membrane i'm serious okay so good versus bad expectations so i've been talking to you about curving your expectations and like the things that you should sit and think about before you be all, all up in arms about the expectation that you set, right? But on the flip side of it, expectations are necessary. Like people make you feel like you having expectations means you're bougie or, or they tell you that your ex expectations are too high. No, there are certain things that you should have expectation for. L listen to this, treat a man as he is and he will remain as he is treat a man as he can and should be and he will become as he can and should be Stephen R. Covey does that not make any sense if you treat this man and you allow him to treat you like garbage if you allow him to talk to you any old way and you don't say nothing, he going to continue to do it. If you're always the one who always set up dates and he never takes the initiative, I'm just throwing out stuff. He will continue to do it. Set some expectations or try to have these conversations. People don't be wanting to have conversations because they scared to lose folks. If the person is supposed to be in your life, they will be in your life. <laughs> Here's some tips for you. Have high expectations for others. Expect people to be good, but don't be naive. When people show you who they are, believe it and maneuver. Eh? Listen, I can have all the highest expectations I want. But, and I could think the greatest in people, and I could think that people will ultimately do good. But if they ain't showing me that, honey, and they doing something else, believe them. Don't try to change it. Don't try to make no excuses for it. Believe it. And if you can handle it, handle it. And if you can't, sis, leave. Show them the dough. Number two. And this is a big one for me. Don't expect others to treat you how you treat them. And I, and I said that earlier. How I treat people doesn't mean that they're going to treat me the same way. And does not mean that they think less of me because they're not treating me the way that, they're, that I'm treating them. Number three, don't avoid expectations. Having expectations is good. Without the right ones, your standards become low. And who want low standards? Not I said the blind mice. You may become complacent when you have lower standards. Having high expectations is not a bad thing. It's just what you use them for. 
Having high expectations to things we can control is beneficial. Expectations will steal the gifts in front of you. All my expectations blinded me from seeing all the love, new, and gifts I had. In front of me, I created this picture of pictures and didn't realize what was in front of me. That didn't make any sense because I read it, I wrote it down. But basically what I'm saying is because I had certain expectations, I didn't realize the good and the gifts and the blessings and the stuff that was in front of me because I expected my life or expected people or things to be a certain way and that just jaded my eyesight. You know what I mean? For a long time, that jaded my eyesight until I took a step back and I was like, but this person showed me in their way, they showed me all of this. Took a step back. Yo, I received so much good things, not the way that I expected it to happen, but then I still received them. And I was so blinded by how I expected it to turn out that I just, I lost sight of it. I, and I thought these things just never happened. And they did. You know what I'm saying? They did. Um, so I, I, I really had to take them expectations, sunglasses off for things that I couldn't control. Things I can control, oh, for sure. Like, though, there are moments and situations that I sit down and I think about and I had clear, if I had clear expectations about them, certain things would not happen. Certain relationships would not come about. Uh, certain situations that I put myself in wouldn't come about if I made clear expectations and I said that to the person or the people, and if they couldn't abide by it or they couldn't deal with it, it was okay. Leave them where they at and keep it moving until I find somebody who could or friends who could. You know what I mean? Um, so I've learned a lot over the years and good times or bad times have set me up to now have clear expectations and stand firm in them from the beginning, <laughs> from the beginning, and not to have anxiety about showing someone the door if they aren't willing to meet me where I stand. And these are things that I can control. Like what I will not do is in an argument, go below the belt and get, start cussing and doing, I will not do that. And if you feel like that's the only way to address me, then we will have to end this. As a friend, I will not tell you only good things. I, ha I have to be the friend that still supports you, but I'm going to be honest, but not tear you down. If that's something you can't deal with, that doesn't mean I have to give you the door, but... I just have to maneuver this friendship. So that's how I feel about expectations. Um, so if you guys enjoyed this, if you guys enjoyed this, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Follow me on all social media platforms at Essence of Shay. Co comment in the description, in the comment box below what y'all think about expectations, about God's voice. Let's let's chat it up because I really wanna I really wanna hear what y'all got to say. But anyways, see you later, so I get lilies. Y'all so far away. Two uh, crash course. Let me hide the money in the dashboard. Max mad, could you lost the brick inside the Porsche? Goofy with the